hashtag speak easy podcast listeners. Can I tell y'all something? I think that I have done a better job at seeking out opportunities, seeking out the right conversations, seeking things out. And this is coming from an introvert that doesn't like to seek things out. But it's because I've had strategic plans in place, because I've had accountability. And this conversation today is going to push you towards being able to seek things out. I'm super excited to have my guest on for today. Hey, Tim, how are you? I'm doing great, Altavis. It's great to chat with you. Glad we're able to get on our Zoom here. Yes, indeed. This is going to be an amazing episode because I know for me, I know the personal struggles I had in making the transition to seeking things out uh, and not just kind of wishing and hoping things came my way. But before we get into that, Tim, let everyone know a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into the topic. Oh, a little bit about myself. That's good. You know, when you're, when you're getting to be my age, you got a long trail behind you that you could kind of emphasize different things. Uh, my wife and I have been married 34 years coming up in another week or so here. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat of a 39 foot RV motor coach, which is where we live, work and travel. So we are homeless nomads is what we like to say. We like to use the word essentialist. We, uh, kind of have these things that are uh, for our purpose, for what we were created for. And uh, I am an author. I consider myself a strategic coach for leaders and leadership teams and uh, also have a podcast myself and uh, are on YouTube. So that's a little bit about me. There's a lot more there, but that should give you enough to get going. Most definitely, because when we think about uh, you saying that you were a homeless nomad, it just sparked something for me. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go in a whole different direction now (laughs) because as entrepreneurs coming in, that's almost where we feel like we are because we're trying to figure out the lay of the land. We're trying to figure out which land we should actually be in. So when making that decision that you were going to purposely make this uh, a life choice, how did that work out for you? Yeah, well, so it's a great question. And I'd like to say that it was all me and an intentional decision, being a coach and someone who's done strategy almost all my life, Altavis. I mean, I wanted to be a coach when I was in middle school. Both my parents were educators. So even when I went to Georgia Tech, became an engineer, started working corporate, I've had businesses and companies all my life. I've always migrated towards coaching, teaching, training. It's always been something that I've done. So, so I know how it works to set a goal, go towards it, be intentional, be focused, However, the big life change that I've been through in my life was totally a catalytic event that I believe was outside my control. Now, I don't think anything's totally outside of our control. And I also believe that we don't have as much control as we think we do. So, and there's a lot of spiritual there. We could go down if you want to go down that path. But in 2008, my wife and I were living in a big old house in a resort community. We uh, had a Ritz Carlton as a neighbor. And we had three companies that each would have been valued at seven figures plus, And we owned over $15 million in real estate. That gives you a little clue where this story's headed. That was 2008. By 2013, we were bankrupt, homeless, and living out of a Honda van. Traveling the world with zero financial resources, but we were being nomads and just trying to obey the Lord and do what we felt we should do because we were... We were hurting. We were in tough shape. And I'm thankful that we were still together. We were kind of clinging to each other and clinging to our Heavenly Father. And so our journey kind of began right then in 2013. We started just traveling and we went through these seasons out to these where we kind of called it a season of manna for those people that have a little bit of biblical background we were we were like in the desert and we didn't know what was going on and we would just have a little bit of resource financial resource or opportunity drop our way and and uh, we were all over the world at the time we were in australia new zealand in europe all over north america with little finances now we were just traveling with a bunch of money and then uh so that was kind of that part of the journey that was a little bit beyond we were kind of way out on a ledge and uh, we moved into a phase that we then call the miracle phase. 
that uh, where we kind of kept having these things happen that we were like going, wow, this is a powerful miracle that uh, this person came to me and said, hey, listen, Tim, I remember you from 10 years ago. Can you teach us, coach us, show us how to do some things? And I went, well, sure. And then around 2015, 16, out of these, we moved, moved into what we call the blessing phase where we went to Bible school for a couple of years, started pressing in more on who we are spiritually and not just with our talents and skills with our business skills and and so shortly after that in 2018 my wife and I finished up bible school we looked at each other and she said I think we need to travel again we should get an RV <laughs> and out to visa like a good husband now this is this is marriage tip this is for entrepreneurs out there I didn't say a word and I kept a real stoic face I didn't like go what are you kidding me? Come on now. I was real quiet. And a few months later, sight unseen, we had purchased the RV that I'm sitting in right now. And since late 2018, 2019, we've been traveling, living, working out of this uh, motor coach that we call Theo. And so that's a little bit of a longer answer than I think you wanted, but I think it gave you some good tidbits along the way. Oh, it gave me some perfect ones because I know for me, when it came to entrepreneurship, especially with my personality as an, as an introvert, I, I did not want to be in the forefront, but it was in 2015, I had a conversation with my oldest daughter about molestation. It was the first time I had ever told anyone that I had been molested, but my daughters had been molested and we were having a conversation. I kind of blurted it out and it shifted because it gave me a freedom. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to move forward. I'm going to become the face of brand. I'm going to speak. I'm going to do all these things. And lo and behold, all of the things that lined up were not what I thought it was going to be. And so I said, you know, January 1st of 2016 is going to be new year, new me. And then December 31st of 2015, I was evicted from my home. And so in the process of fighting the courts for my sister and being a single mother of three with my sister made four, I was literally moving everything out of our home to the sidewalk the day before I was supposed to have this brand new new year, new me. Let's take on the world. But I said, okay, well, I have a decision to make because I already had a flight plan. And I said, do I take this flight or do I have my pity party? Because that's, that's the go-to, right? The pity party. What was me? Everything's falling apart. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take this flight. And it was the first time that I actually made a decision to go and, and not just stay. And first flight, no problem. Second flight, there's no group number on my ticket. And so I'm a creative in my mind. I'm going to jail. It's a fake ticket. Even though they're, they printed out the ticket and handed it to me. <laughs> it's a fake ticket. Uh, but I go let them know at the booth that there's no group number on the ticket. She said, no problem going with group two. So I'm standing in line when they call group two and then they call my name. And I'm like looking out the window to see if TSA is like coming down from a helicopter. Are they riding through to come arrest me? And she hands me a brand new ticket in this first class. And so ultimately I was homeless flying in first class. Hmm. It changed everything. So you know what's so powerful about that? First of all, you've used words in this short conversation we've had that are extremely important to me. It's the title of my podcast. You've used the word seek a couple of times. You've used the word go and you've used the word create. That's the name of our podcast. And those are some words that when I was walking around at some of the toughest times of my life on golf courses, I mean, we were in a resort community, not being able to financially live in a resort community. And I was walking around just kind of crying out to the Lord. I'd like to say it was praying. It was probably just kind of whining and complaining a good bit. Not that you know, I know no one else does that. I'm the only guy that whines to the <laughs> Lord, but, uh, but I'm just doing that. And he gave me those three words. He said, seek, go create. And of course there's some, there's some preaching and sermons behind each one of those words, but it's really foundational for me. So I, I appreciate you doing that. And I want to add one thing, because I think this is powerful for entrepreneurs. We typically whether we're extrovert or introvert, we love to control our surroundings, our situations, our, our everything about us. It's kind of a high control. It's one of the reasons why entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs. We think that we have control and we do have a little bit. I do not want to make light of that. 
However, what you described, what I've described, and I can guarantee you just about anyone listening in can describe their life. They made all these plans and I'm not against plans. I'm not against strategy. I'm a strategic coach. I'm working with clients this week where we're developing their strategy for the next few years. But yet we have to be in a position where we can adjust. We could be nimble because, you know, a little over two and a half years ago, none of us knew what a worldwide pandemic would look like. And here it was. And, and, and I have a firm belief. I'm, I'm preaching a little bit here, so stop me if you need to. I have a firm belief that many of us can go through significant change in our lives by being intentional and purposeful about making change. However, just like you just said, just like I've shared with my story, just like the listener, I can guarantee you they have a story like this. Most of us really make change when there's an external catalytic event that forces us to do something different. And I don't believe this is a little of my spiritual coming out. I don't believe God brought the 2008 downturn, the great resi- you know, whatever we call it now, the, you know, whatever the, 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 whatever. I don't think he brought it on to get Tim's attention, but I think when it happened, he goes, ah, I've got an event now that I could use to get Tim where I need him to be. And I could address his heart in a way that I've never been able to, because now he's softened. He's not all full of himself like he was in 2007 and eight, thinking he was a big deal, entrepreneur, business guy, making all this money. Now we can get started. So I I think that's when significant change happens. Alta Vista is when we go through that, that you're starting a new life. And then all of a sudden, whoa, there's a little extra here I've got to deal with. That's when we see what we're made of. It's so powerful that you said that, because even when we think about it, if you, if you have someone who has a heart transplant, when they have that new heart, there's a fresh energy that they have. Like they may have never felt that type of energy in their body before. They may have never had that amount of blood flowing through their body before. And it makes a huge difference because now they're like, I want to live. I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to achieve this. And it's the same way when we are in entrepreneurship, because we have to have that renewed heart. If we don't, then at some point, there's going to be something that happens in your business and it will make you sluggish. It will make you want to quit. It will make you want to say, I was stupid for even making this a thought process that I could make this happen. It will make you have all of these decisions that go, um, that are contrary to the purpose that may be on your life. And so I feel like that is so significant. That heart, that heart transplant that we have in that moment of all heck sometimes just breaking loose. That heart transplant is one that, it refortifies who we are. So that way, as we're moving forward, we're able to go higher, we're able to do more. And the conversations that we have after those significant things that happen in our life, man, you can see the growth, you can see the maturity and it's so valuable. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I've seen. I mean, you know, I'd love to say that we all grow and, and continue when things are going great. But I look back on my life, I'm 58 years old now. And listen, I know I don't look it for those that are on video, I know. However, uh, I got a few years on me and, and you know, I look back and, and it's unfortunate that most of my learning, most of my growth has come when I was probably on the exterior going through some pretty tough times. And, and, you know, I, I think we love to think we desire for everything to be comfortable and awesome and a boatload of money in the bank and, uh, you know, all the stuff that we talk about success. This is a big theme of all that I do now because of our background is redefining success. What does success really mean in the year that we're in and the, you know, the 2020s, you know, and I think a lot of people have had to redefine it. And listen, I'm not against cars in the garage and the houses and money in the bank and the titles that we have. And I'm not against that. However, I think most of us or many of us are recognizing that true success is something a bit deeper than that. And, and those are the things that I think a, a number of people are pressing in, trying to get to that place where they know that success means something different than just 
something superficial. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, have y'all been taking notes? If not, I need you to hit the pause button. I need you to go ahead, rewind, and I need you to take notes because there were some gems in this episode that can help move you past that, that obstacle that's in your path, that mountain that you don't see how you're supposed to get around it or over it. There were some things that if you had to restart your business, there were some key things that you could learn in this episode for sure. But with that being said, what would be the final piece that you would say to them for the one that's feeling like, I don't have what it takes to start again? Hmm. Well, uh, I'll, I'll say a, I'll say one thing related to that. I, I think that we're all equipped. We all are created for purpose. And I think our journey in life is to identify what that purpose is. And so if someone is at a place where they feel down, they are discouraged, they are at a low point, um, I would say the first thing is, is just to understand and, and listen, they may have spiritual background that they may not, you were created for something. Now it may be what you've been doing. It may be something else. And we could always adjust. We could pivot. We could change. You were created for purpose and for something on this earth. And so our mission is to find out what that is. And you can't find that out unless you keep going, unless you get back up. Unless you now, I will say this, this is a little tip that I learned because I'm kind of a type A go, go, go person. I needed to learn how to pause and slow down a little bit to kind of hear that still voice to understand what my purpose was because I would be going 90 miles an hour, my hair blazing and all this kind of stuff. And so I do think you need to get up and move. But if you're one that's prone to go really fast, pause, spend some quiet time set the phone down, get a journal out, piece of paper, if it's prayer for you, if it's meditation, whatever it is, because I truly believe <laughs> that you'll find out what that next step is if you just get quiet and let the noise of the world fall away from you. That's what I had to do. I love that. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, so, it's so powerful to know that Again, success looks so much different and can be so different from individual to individual, but it's achievable. Mm -hmm. So that means no matter what the dream is, whatever the goal is, success is achievable. Yeah. Amen. But we have to be careful not to copy people. That was a great point that you made. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people look at someone else and think that their success equals what success equals for them. It's all individual. It is very specific. We're all created individually for something. And, uh, you know, I don't need to copy what Alta Vista is doing. You definitely don't need to copy what I'm doing. You don't need to jump in an RV unless you want to. I will tell you, it's pretty darn fun. It's, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> to travel to travel all over North America and just kind of hang out and enjoy things. We kind of go where the weather's good and all, but um, yeah, that that's very, very important. What is your success? What does success mean for you? That part. Oh my goodness. So let the studio audience know how they can get in contact with you, how they can listen to the podcast and connect. Let them know all of the links for sure. <laughs> Sure. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Altavis. Well, I am, uh, I'm at timwinders.com, W-I-N-D-E-R-S.com. And when you go there, you can learn a little bit about me. I released a book last May. It is a novel. It's titled Coach, A Story of Success Redefined. And it is about everything we've been talking about here. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it is a story, but it's the main character kind of goes through somewhat of a journey that we've been discussing. And so I'd love for people to pick the book up. I've really enjoyed the feedback and all. So they can find that at timwinders.com or Amazon or anywhere you buy books. And then you can also link to our podcast there, which is Seek, Go, Create. Seek, Go, Create. It's those three words. You can also go to seekgocreate.com or find it on any of your podcast platforms. And we discuss business, leadership, and ministry. We mash them all together and talk about redefining success and it's long form interview. So it's me asking questions just like you're asking me. And I love doing that. That's a lot of fun. So thank you for asking timwinders.com. That's where people can find all about Tim. 
awesome. See, easy podcast listeners, make sure again that you go and you connect. Uh, the reason we bring such great conversations for you guys is because we want you to understand that entrepreneurship is a broad term. It covers so many different things, but also there are people that have been where you're trying to go and they want to help you. They want to support you. So make sure that you reach out, connect, connect, connect uh, by every means possible. <laughs> and with that being said, I appreciate you as your host, Alex of East Felser. Listen, it's about you elevating in life and in business. With that being said, don't forget to press it out. See ya.